PFF dropped a brand new, way too early 2024 mock draft, so I am here to review it. What is going on, guys? It is Alex coming back at you with another video, and today it's time to get right into the mock the mock season. You guys can see right below my face, it is a brand new board that I'm developing, hence why it is not fully complete, but I wanted to get you guys a top 32 so you can at least see a little bit early on what I am thinking. Let's get right into this. We are just about 30 subscribers away from 8,000. And, you know, I love you guys all individually. Would love to reach that milestone. So let's make it happen. Let's get right into this. And I have been posting a lot about, you know, wondering what you guys would be wanting over the summer in terms of video ideas. I'm going to be getting to sports betting as well as fantasy football. So definitely let me know how you guys would like those videos. It's going to be very fun for that. If you guys are into sports betting, well, I actually have a code that will be in the description where uh, you can go to Underdog Fantasy. You guys can go and be able to deposit 10 to $100. They match that and it sends your boy $50. So help your boy out. You never know because it's always appreciated. And uh, yeah, you get some free money because of it. So sounds good to me. And DFSs are legal in states like Texas, which is pretty insane. Let's get right into this. The number one overall selection, Caleb Williams, another rank Lincoln Riley dude at number one. Uh, Caleb's an awesome player. It's going to be weird to see how they maneuver the dead cap here, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I personally think that Caleb is the number one player in the class. His playmaking ability is off the charts. I just dropped a quarterback's video yesterday, so feel free to check that out because there are 16 dudes on it and there could have been up to 20 or more. But to keep it simple, to make sure that, you know, carpal tunnel does not hit me a couple years earlier, I wanted to make sure that it was at least a little bit digestible with sub 20. But it's still awesome nonetheless. Feel free to check that out. I broke down Kill Williams a lot more over there. I think that Marvin Harrison Jr. would be their selection here if they couldn't trade out, but God only knows the amount of trade offers they are going to get if they do not want to go after Caleb Williams. I'd personally go Caleb Williams and find a way to work the cap out with Kyler Murray to potentially move him, but you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, so I guess they spoiled the second overall pick. Thanks for doing that, boo. Marvin Harrison Jr. So just talked about it. That'd be my number one overall selection, but you know, he is my, well, they got number one and two on my board. So good for them. Uh, pick number three, Indianapolis Colts going at Joe Alt. Uh, again, sticking to the board. No, <laughs> one, two, three. This is the first time I'm looking at this one, but you know, Joe Alt is an amazing, amazing player. He was one of the guys who really made me start questioning Miles Murphy's potential in the NFL, but I also think that it could just be because he is really damn good. Um, yeah, you see those statistics there, six foot eight, 315 pounds. He's a beast. He's a beast. He can handle power. He can handle finesse. Uh, I'm really excited. So yes, I am going to start agreeing that this might be the best tackle prospect since Penny Sewell. The only reason he's not number one on my board is because we have two potentially generational talents on the board. So yeah, this guy's going to be a freak. I'm a huge, huge fan of him. Titans in going Brock Bowers. So I'm um, sticking to the board. Oh, wow. You know, we're we're one to one right now. Titans going Brock Bowers would be insane, in my opinion. I think they already have their tight end room fully loaded up. But uh, as you can see, I do not have Brock Bowers listed as a tight end. I just don't think that's proper to say that he's a tight end. I think he is a super weapon. And um, that's just going to be what I call him until the draft. That's just what it's going to be. But Brock Bowers is awesome. He is on that Kyle Pitts level. Very excited to see what he can do in the NFL. I think the tight end room is completely filled out there because I have full faith in Josh Wiley, who was a top 64 player for me. Um, so I think that him and Chig would be a really nice one too. Don't really think Brock would add as much. I think Olu Fishanu would be a better choice here to get a secured left tackle. And then I know you got have you have Andre Dillard, but Andre could be a guard as well. You'd essentially have Olu Fishanu and then Peter Skaronski. That'd be a nasty left side of the offensive line. Let's continue on here. And at pick number five, the Buccaneers go Drake May out of North Carolina. I think this is a best case scenario. So um, I'm certainly enjoying the idea, the prospect of that. Commanders going Olu Fishanu. I think at this point, it's perfectly fine. You know, Charles, or I think believe that Leno is there. At left tackle, the left tackle spot is going to be vacant soon or, um, you know, those guys are just getting too old. So I think that an upgrade is certainly due. The commanders could certainly use that. I think a quarterback like Quinn Ewers could be on their board, but at number six, it's a little bit rich to go after QB3. Rams getting Kool-Aid McKinstry is a perfect first selection. I think they're definitely looking to be able to acquire another top tier cornerback and um, I'm not going to stop them. Pick number eight, the Packers go on Mecca Abuka. 
I really like Emeka Abuka. He is number 10 on my board. So um, Kool-Aid McKinstry is there at number 16. You know, we deviated from my board, but still all very good selections. I think Emeka Abuka would be a nasty addition for Green Bay in the best way possible. He also fits exactly what they usually draft which is weird why they went after Jaden Reed this year after going after much larger, much heavier receivers in the past. But at number nine, the Falcons go Jared Verse. This was a pick that I used to love sending to the Falcons this past year. Decided to return. I don't know why. Maybe teams didn't like his medical evals, but you know, definitely an extremely talented player, well-deserving of being in the top 10. Steelers going Jeremiah Trotter. Uh, I love Jeremiah Trotter as a Steelers fan. We've been still looking for that next Ryan Shazier for a while, and I think this would be an excellent addition to the team. Next, we have the Seahawks going Jarzon Newton. Uh, I have him at number eight on my overall big board. You guys know me. This has been my man for the past year. I fell in love with him watching him versus Wisconsin, and um, you know he has elite hand fighting technique. He is honestly extremely fast in a straight line. He's uh, 300 pounds, so he has the size to play inside. But he also plays some reps on the edge, which is weird. But, you know, I don't really think that's where he's going to end up. He's a pressure machine, but he is not just because he's going up against crap talent. He's doing it against very good talent. And I fully believe that he's going to be one of those guys where people just don't know him until more people start catching along. More creators will start start catching along. And I fully believe this guy will be a top 10 overall player on a lot of people's big boards. I think he's phenomenal. You know, he had a really, really good secondary to help him get to the quarterback, but I honestly think that he might have helped out the secondary just as much as they helped him out. He's honestly really fun to watch. Then you got New England going JC Latham, a pick that I've made almost every single mock draft I've had for them. Kind of feels like something that is set in stone. Raiders going Michael Penix Jr. I think he's an awesome player. I really do. And you know, I I love Michael Penix. I just don't know if the injury history is going to make him drop, but This is a good system for him to go to. He does feel very similar to Jimmy G in that distributor role. I'd be very excited to see Michael Penix have a very good career because I've been a big fan of him since the Ohio State-Indiana game. Pick number 14, the Bears go Dallas Turner. He's a top six player on my big board. Uh, He could definitely fall. I don't know if he's going to stay there, but you know I have seen those high-end reps, and this guy looks like he could be Will Anderson-esque, which he played next to Will for a long time. I would hope that he'd pick up a thing or two. But Dallas Turner, a very talented player, and helping out the Bears front is never a bad thing. Uh, Chicago Bears then also going Kalen King. I do not like Kalen King that much. He did not make my top 32. He is significantly worse than Joey Porter in my eyes. He could take a big step up, similar to how Joey Porter Jr. did this year. But I think Kalen King, you know, he was somebody who was absolutely embarrassed by the guy who just went at number two overall. And I thought Joey Porter Jr. honestly did a fairly solid job versus Marvin Harrison Jr. To be honest, I think both him and or Joey Porter Jr. and Marvin Harrison Jr. will both be uh, Hall of Fame players one day. That's a bold take of mine, but I do believe, well, Joey Porter Jr. is my number two player. So I guess it's kind of hard for Kalen King to match up to that. But Kalen looked out of the water when he was playing against a high level NFL talent. Maybe as he should. But he looked much worse than Joey Porter Jr., who went at number 32 in this past year. Bears getting another corner. I also don't think it's great value. Broncos going Cooper DeGene. Uh, excellent, excellent build. He's over six foot, over 200 pounds. And I love Iowa DBs. So, yeah, cross country pick six. You know, good for him. I I really like Cooper DeGene. Uh, pick number 17. I honestly should be putting him higher on my board. Where is he at? He's at 29. I think that he should be probably higher. There you go. You guys can see it now. But... I'm probably going to boost him up after this. Houston Texans going Leonard Taylor. He did not make my top 32, but he certainly could be. This is a very good defensive interior class. You know, he's a good, he's a really good player and getting defensive interior for the Texans, never a bad thing. Uh, Very fun player. I love him. I love him to death. Uh, Chargers going to Tavion Sanders. I think he has short arms, but he's a really fun tight end to watch. Go UT. I can't really say that because I go to school in Texas, but you know, uh, Jatavian Sanders would be a good addition there for the Chargers. It's tough to find a tight end, too, in this class. There's some really good ones, but, you know, I would probably be starting to lean more towards, um, man, I'm tripping on his name. He was uh, Florida State's net. He's a new Florida State tight end, but went to South Carolina last year. I'm tripping on the name, but it'll probably be brought up in this mock. I'd prefer to go after that route over Jatavian Sanders. Pick number 19, the Giants go chop Robinson out of Penn State. He just missed being in the top 32, but I'm very excited to see 
a little bit more of his tape. I love Penn State players. I literally have a one college jersey, and that is of Micah Parsons at Penn State. So Penn State certainly has uh, certainly my heart with that one. But good, good pass rush win rate, good um, pass rushing grade. I think I'm very excited to see because Chop didn't stand out to me, but he certainly, you know, maybe when you put him under the magnifying glass, could stand out a little bit more. Saints going JT to Malau. Uh, where did I put end up putting JT at number 18 on my board? He'll be probably going in the top 20. Another guy, well, speaking of the game versus Penn State, this guy absolutely dominated during that game. Very excited to see him in the NFL. I did not like his inconsistencies, however. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm just a little bit worried about it because, yeah, 67 grade in the other 12 games. It's a weird, really weird. But we saw what he could have what he could be. Very excited for that. Vikings going Quinn Ewers here. Nice succession plan. Good for them. Um, you know, Quinn has some slip ups here and there, but I go into more depth in the quarterback video. Da- no way. They got Graham Barton here. OK, I thought I was the crazy one with Graham Barton at number 11 on my board, which now I will scroll down a bit uh, so you guys get to actually see all 32. Whatever. You get to see a blank number 33. I'll, I'll keep it up to here because uh, Graham Barton's the guy of the hour. I did not think that Graham Barton was going to be selected. That's crazy. Okay, I fell in love with Graham Barton. Extremely athletic. Like, just one of my favorite guys. He's definitely a my guy in this class. I did not think he was going to get drafted in the first round of this. Very excited to see two of my guys from last year and Graham Barton and Jerzon Newton finally getting the hype that they deserve. He went back, which bummed me out. But honestly, if he's starting to get first round hype, which, yeah, it's way too early. But I do think that his talent will definitely keep him in this conversation. A really fun player to watch. And on the move, this guy's a freak. Big fan of him. Jaguar is going Denzel Burke. Uh, I just missed my top 32 as well. You know, he's uh, he's intriguing. He's intriguing. He is a boundary corner, which is nice. There's not too many of really good boundary corners in this class. I'm ex- I'm extremely excited. I'm I'm curious what he's going to do in the NFL. I need to watch a little bit more all 22 on him. But, um, you know, he has a good frame, 6 of 1, 190. That's fine. You know, he'll probably be up to 200 in the NFL. Uh, but, yeah, this is the big reason he regressed. He was supposed to be probably a top five selection for me if he did not regress last year. Because as a true freshman, if you're starting in Ohio State, that's usually a good sign. And uh, he had some pretty good numbers, but he definitely could bounce back. And I'm excited to see that happen. Ravens going Michael Hall Jr. Uh, so, yeah, after losing Clayus Campbell, they definitely need somebody to kick to the inside. I think in my latest mock draft with Broshmo, I decided to go after a defensive interior for them as well. But I'm forgetting who. Uh, might have been Tyler Davis, but doesn't even matter. Uh, Ravens going a defensive interior who has high upside. I'll take it. So next, we have Detroit Lions going Mason Smith, who tore his ACL, 6'5", 300 pounds. I just read, I did not even mean to pretty much copy this. Um, but he was absolutely, like, he was. he's an absolute monster. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. He should kick to the inside, obviously, at 6'5", 300. But, you know, he's somebody who has all the tools in the world. I'm very excited to see what he is going to do and bounce back uh, when, you know, he's healthy. Uh, pick number 26, Cooper BB for the Cowboys. I don't know if they're going to take another interior offensive lineman. You know, there were rumors about Steve Avila, but, you know, they don't need to take the interior and in the first round when you have guys like Kingsley Sua Matea and then, um, I mean, Amarius Mims also there on the board, which I don't even think I included Amarius by accident in this. So RIP to that. So there's my 33rd player, so to speak. Uh, Marius Mims, you have two right tackles open, especially with um, the, I'm forgetting. Why, why am I forgetting people's names today? But the right tackle is going to be up for a contract. So I do think that could be a better way to go. Pick number 27, the Packers going Cameron Kitchens. I really like Cameron Kitchens. He is, where is he on my board? Um, he's number 21. So him here at 27, especially to a team that's looking for a nice um, rangy safety. It's a very good fit. I like that a lot. Uh, of course, yes, this is via New York Jets. Pick number 28, the Bengals going Kalen Bullock. I, again, kind of feel this is a pretty good idea. Um, I prefer James Williams to have a more heavy hitting guy. I know they got Nick Scott in there, but... I think Kalen Bullock is a stud. He's my safety one at the moment. You know, I definitely think he has a lot of potential in the class. For San Francisco going Jonah Monheim. Again, kind of weird to see him go above the other tackles, but he's undersized, which seems to be a thing that the Niners are, you know, down for. But, you know, you have guys like Kingsley Suamataya 
and then um, Amarius Mims, who I think are better and better sized. Buffalo Bills gangs, there we go. <laughs> Gangly Sua Mataea. Uh, he's a monster from Oregon. I loved him. I was like, damn, this left tackle from Oregon kind of sucks. And then I looked at the right tackle. I was like, woo. And um, turns out he's the guy who transferred to BYU. But BYU knows how to train their linemen as well. Oregon has a really good eye for offensive linemen. So I'm very excited to see him going into the NFL draft. You know, he's probably going to end up being a top 10 player, but I want to see um, I want to see a little bit more tape from him. Pick number 31, the Eagles going Xavier worthy. I don't really think you need to go another guy like Devontae Smith. But I understand if you want to take him for a deep threat, you can do that. A.D. Mitchell, to me, is a better choice here. I think he'd be a better wide receiver for. But, you know, it is what it is. Xavier Worthy is a really damn good player. Then we have Kansas City ending off the draft with Rome Odunze. Again, A.D. Mitchell getting snubbed, but Rome Odunze is a very fun player. And I think he's over six foot three and 200 pounds. So, you know, he definitely is a talented player talented wide receiver so that is going to be the video thank you guys so much for watching let's get to ak see you guys on the far side peace